beautiful maxim of the server. Okay? Thursday. Is that all right? Oh no. The unopened treasure chest. The cultivation of faith, hope, and charity helps us discover and live this treasure more fully each day. Our sacrifices and renunciations done to put on the new man help us dig this treasure out of the earthly makeup of our lives. If there's any treasure out there, it's God. And a lot of people miss that. They think treasure is gold, silver, or gadgets. Those are not treasures. Thursday, a powerful net. This is the gospel today. The kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, collecting every kind of fish. Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. Nothing escapes from uh, the, the kingdom. He is able to see what good and evil has been done. His power extends over all the failures and successes of human history. Remember, God never says, God never expects us to succeed. He never. He never expects us to succeed. What God expects us is to try. What God expects us to do is just follow Him and let Him take care of the rest. Submit to Him everything. Submit to Him your life, your work, your family life, your problems, if you have any. Submit all to Him and let Him take care of you. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Evil does not have the last word. That's true. Already home, when I participate in the Mass, my confidence in the Lord's providence should grow. I strive to bring others to the Eucharist as well, so they can experience the peace and happiness of participating in heaven on earth. The Mass is like heaven on earth. Believe it or not. <clears throat> if you listen to everything I, I have, or we'll have another showing soon. If you want to see, uh, I, I will ask you what you want. Maybe you want Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want David. A movie? Yeah, you like that. Solomon, yeah. documentaries. Oh. Some movies too. Uh, too much familiarity. They had not seen anything extraordinary about him before he started his public ministry. Remember, the Lord was 30 years old and he had not done anything. You know how old was uh, William, William Pick was a uh, Prime Minister of England? You know how old he was? 22. 22 years old, he was the Prime Minister of England. The youngest. The youngest. Yeah. Alexander the Great, he was 29 and he conquered like half of the world. 29 years old. Napoleon Bonaparte, mm -hmm. in his 20s, and everybody will tremble at the sound of his name. <laughs> Napoleon Bonaparte, oh, Hitler. Hitler. I'm not sure how old he was, but he, I don't know. So there's too much familiarity. They thought he was just like everyone else. So when they hear he's doing, doing miracles, they don't believe it. That's what happens. What? <clears throat> like, uh, let's say the Chief Justice is your boyhood friend. You're just playing together. And then now he's the Chief Justice. You feel different, right? So you go to his office, come on, we're just friends. Come on. No formalities. That's what happened to Jesus. Who? Jesus? He's the son of Mary. I know him. He was playing there. He, was, he worked in the carpenter shop. He's doing miracles? Really? So they won't take it. An unwelcome prophet, a miracle worker in waiting. Saturday. This is the gospel, by the way, tomorrow. Saturday, heeding or silencing the conscience. Ooh. 
This is something else. A disturbing voice. John the Baptist awakened a sense of sin and the need for repentance. What's wrong with a little entertainment? A lot of people say, I was just talking about it. Remember the diversion? The ta one tactic of the devil. What's wrong with a little entertainment? Come on, let's go. <clears throat> There's a bar on uh, Belleville Ave. Is that a bar? I don't know. I haven't. You know, there's a bar on Belleville Ave close to Union. Union. Close to the lake. Lake? A little bit. I think it's that way. I don't know what it is. I saw a gentleman's club. Belleville Ave. Yeah. A gentleman's club. Yeah. What's wrong with little entertainment? Come on. The devil. A lot of cars park across the street. In front of St. Peter's. Really? Behind it, kind of. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's around the corner. A Christian's life is rich in moments of happiness. Entertainment, relaxation, and activities for pastimes. What are you doing? I'm just watching. But this is not good stuff for you. I'm just watching. I'm not affected. You say it. No. Actually, you are affected. Mm -hmm. It becomes like it, you know, so much. Uh, playing up in your it head, in your before you know it, it, it becomes almost real in your head. Yeah. The proverbial second chance. Do I realize how much mercy the Lord has already shown me? So, what's keeping me from following Him? After all, God loves me while I'm in this. Next Sunday is the parable of the rich fool. This man is only interested in his own problems. A person who lives in this is how we should live. Are you ready? Number two. A person who lives as if he were to die every day. Do you live as if you will die tonight? Are you ready? You know, whenever I ask a question, a lot of people will say, no, I'm not ready. Why? I still have to do stuff. <laughs> I still have to cook. <laughs> Unfinished business. That's Unfinished what. business. What unfinished business? What is more enticing than getting to heaven? See, you see how, how big the idea here for this next Sunday's gospel? Now this man's stupidity consisted in making material possession his only aim in life. Is that your aim in life? As if it's his insurance policy. It is lawful for a person to want to own what he needs for living. But if possession of material resources becomes an absolute, it spells the ultimate destruction of the individual and society. In, a, in other words, it, it becomes an obsession. That's all you think about. Money, money, money. Like the father of uh, Sir Chief. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see? That's the drama on TV. See, they know they're watching. <laughs> so, it is okay to work, to earn a living. Do you ever pray to be rich? No, just comfortable. Yeah, so just enough. You don't want excess, like, <clears throat> like uh, Oprah. Oprah has uh, about twelve billion dollars. And she's adding up about one and a half every year. But she does. She, she spends it well. You think so? You know, I mean, it could be better, but I mean, what's better? To give me some? <laughs> no. But she's got school. She, she donates a lot. That for whom? That for whose glory? I don't know. I know it just Based on what I've seen, Based on what I've seen, the coverage I've seen on TV is for her own glory. It's like the children were worshipping her. Oh, huh? that's how you see it's it? It's almost like, sorry, sorry. Huh? Whereas, <clears throat> anything, anything that's, that's bound to you, if you say, no, no, it's not mine, it's his. That's what she should do. All those money has been given to her for God's glory, not hers. We're not judging, but that's the fact. You have to, you have to use whatever resources you've been provided with. 
in his glory, everything in his honor and praise. Okay? Any question? Such profound messages this week. Bible study materials. <clears throat> Inspiring article. Where's your answer? How will Christ just the living and the dead? I'm on inspiring article. It's after the gospel. Keep on. See, it's for kids. First reading, responsorial song, gospel, after that. Inspiring article. So, what does it mean to say that the church is the universal sacrament of salvation? All right, there's your answer. To, to me, question and answer is good because it's, it's really easy to read. Where does the one church of Christ subsist? And why is the church called Catholic? And what's the meaning of the affirmation, outside the church there's no salvation? Remember, the church is the whole body of Christians. <clears throat> that, is the, that is the teaching of Christ. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one, no one goes to the Father except through me. Which means, if you do not recognize Jesus Christ, you will not be saved. That's the meaning of this. Funny story, the plaster of Paris. <laughs> Quote for this week, Wherever the bishop shall appear, let there the multitude also be. Wherever Jesus Christ is, there is the Catholic Church. Who said that? St. Ignatius of Antioch. When? First century. See, it was St. Ignatius of Antioch who coined the word Catholic. Apologetics. This is part three of three. This is the last uh, segment of a question I never tire of answering. This about this about atheism and all those. I'll, I'll get uh, let me see. None have been erected in the child's argument, such as asking whether God could create a stone too heavy for him to lift. On the very last page, it's a very interesting reading. If you have been reading for the last three weeks, that's part one, part two, and this is part three. My question to you is this, or for you. If science discovered tomorrow that the universe was half its apparent age, and estimated the stars as half their current number, would the belief in God somehow be twice as credible in your eyes? So we have all this. You see the pros and the cons. Beautiful. Yeah. And of course, the good news. The good news you know. You fool! <laughs> Probably I'll be reading on, on Sunday. So. But I'm not yet in a position to read the gospel. I'm just limited to first reading and second reading. Alright? Did you learn something? Yes. Yes. The four tactics. Yeah. Imagine the four tactics of the devil. You never, never. <laughs> and that's and that's in here. Yeah, you never never go near to that. Diversion is here. What's wrong with little entertainment? Come on. I will start again. You still have battery. Am I bothered? Am I bothered by the fact that only you come? No. I would be I'd be the first to admit that I'd be more inspired if there were more people, but it doesn't it doesn't bother me at all. Reason? I'm doing this not for you. I'm doing this for me. 
This is for God. God is using me to make this available to people, but only if they're here. As Jesus says, let those who have ears hear, and let those who have eyes see. Unfortunately, some ears don't want to hear, and some eyes don't want to see. But it's all right, because I'm focused on the final price. I'm not focused, oh, it's raining, oh, it's so cold, oh, it's so hot, oh, it's so dark. I'm not, those, those, those things don't bother me. It's the price that you uh, keep focus on. And you'll never go wrong. Trust me. You'll never go wrong. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. Now let's pray. No, let's continue. Let's pray. Everything we say and do in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We bless and glorify you, Lord, as we ask for you to bless us always, especially now, those who are coming here to the Bible study class at St. Peter's, and even those who wish to come but are unable to, that you will touch uh, people's hearts and minds and keep them open, open to your truth, open to your beauty, open to your love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We also pray for those who are sick, in body and in spirit, that you'll make them feel your compassion, your mercy, and your love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We also pray for those who have gone before us, especially those who have no one praying for them in the state of purgatory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We also pray for Pope Francis, and all those who minister the church, that uh, they will only do as you will. So your church here on earth, Lord, will be strengthened and be united as you will and as you wish. No division, no deception, no diversion, no discouragement. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. You may say your prayers now. Dear Heavenly Father, I truly believe that the job that I have today is because you bless me with it. Remembering how I waited so long to receive it. And today, well, there's a lot of friction going on and, and I've been feeling bad about it. And I, I, want, I want it to be peace. I want peace and harmony, and for this I pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. our prayer. And for all the intentions and supplications known only to God, we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And together we pray from our heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And bless us, O Lord, this thy gifts, which are about to receive from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.